What is up guys? This is code. Gotta redo that. Okay, so in the latest update, or one of the recent updates, MapleStory gave us the awesome option of crafting small wealth acquisition potions. So these are basically 30 minute coupons that you can pop. And you can craft these by using your normal wealth acquisition potion recipe. And then once you pop the recipe, it's gonna give you the ability to craft both the big waps and the small waps. And so what I thought I'd do today is take this opportunity of just using a 30 minute small wealth acquisition potion and we're gonna do kind of a podcast episode talking about my Maple Story as a kid, how I started playing Maple Story, how my rough childhood of basically growing up in like the Kerning City of California, you know, basically growing up in the hood, how that impacted everything related to my Maple Story life. Like I'm gonna talk about how my house was shot at as a kid. I'm gonna be talking about, you know, my family members, my friends in high school, all that sorts of stuff. So stick around. This is the first episode of the Wealth Acquisition Podcast. 30 minutes of uncut maple story bantering from your favorite maple binge. So let's get started. So I first started playing maple story in sixth grade. So prior to sixth grade, what happened was I was going to school in kind of a rough neighborhood. And so when I say rough neighborhood, I'm talking about like, you know, very poor, very, uh, it's like the ghetto, dude. Like, I hate using that word because it's like, I'm going to cancel you for using that word. But bro, I grew up in it, right? So basically growing up in the hood really, really impacted my personal life as a kid because I had family members who were associated with gangs. I had, you know, my parents, well, not my mom, but my dad was like doing drugs and you know, heavy drinker, all that sorts of stuff. But, you know, it's, you know, I have a really great relationship with my parents. However, it's just, those were the conditions of us growing up, right? And so basically growing up as a kid, prior to sixth grade, I was growing up in that really, really rough environment. And so as, you know, someone growing up in that environment, we didn't have a computer, we didn't have internet, we didn't have like, you know, access to Maple Story is basically what I'm trying to say. And so once I moved to sixth grade, I moved up into like this school where there were more rich people and there was more of an Asian community as well. And I don't mean to like profile people or whatever, but it's just like, you know, when I started hanging out with more Asian friends, basically they were like, hey, why don't you play this Korean game called Maple Story? And so um, that really, you know, them interacting with me was life changing because it basically impacted the way I'm gonna live out the rest of my life, right? And so while I was in school in sixth grade, because they knew that the kids had a little bit more money there and, that, and all that sort of stuff, like they didn't feel uncomfortable assigning homework that required us to use the computer, right? And so when we were assigned projects, it was kind of just assumed that we had a computer to work with with internet, right? And so when I was doing those projects as a kid, I had to go to the library. I didn't have a computer, I didn't have internet. And so I told my mom, hey, can you take me to the library so I can go do my homework? And this was the first time where she ever saw me like needing to use a computer to do research. And so eventually, after like so many trips to the library, my mom was like, okay, we're gonna get internet, we're gonna get a computer. And so that was really, really cool as a kid because that was exciting. And the first thing I did when I got on my computer with internet, I remember going to Google image search and looking up just Yu-Gi-Oh cards, like the pictures of the Yu-Gi-Oh cards because I was really into Yu-Gi-Oh cards at the time. And so once I went back to school and I told all of my friends like, hey guys, I have a computer with internet. There were three things that they told me to do. First off, they told me to make a MySpace because that was really big. And they were like, okay, we also want to connect with you instantly. So make sure you download AOL, Instant Messenger, AIM, right? And then the third thing they told me to do was make a MapleStory account. And I was like, MapleStory, what the heck is that? And they were like, oh, it's this really cool game. Just try it, we're all playing it. And so I made my MapleStory account, I downloaded MapleStory, and then the first thing I do is make my character. And my character, granted, like, I know nothing about the game. Like, I'm a total noob, I don't know anything, I didn't even look up a guide, I'm just like trying to follow what's on the screen, trying to follow what my friends tell me, and then, so, you have to keep in mind that I'm like a little kid without any knowledge of what internet security is either right and so internet security you got to make sure you don't give out your personal details your credit card numbers your social security numbers your address all that sorts of stuff and what's the first thing that i do as a kid on my maple story account i use my full name 
which I don't really mind giving out my full name. My name is Jose Madrigal. I use that Jose Madrigal as my Maple Story IGN. And then my friend saw that and he was like, kind of a nerd. He was a really big computer nerd. Really, really smart guy. Probably like the smartest person in our class at the time. And he was like, you need to change your name. Like you can't have this as your name. And I'm like, it's no big deal. He was like, mm, I would be wary. And so I took his advice to heart and I was like, you know what, I am gonna change my IGN. So I ended up changing my IGN and thank God I did because back in the day, if you over leveled and you weren't assigning your stats correctly, if you didn't get your job advancement in time, you're basically griefing your progression. And so thank God I kind of also recreated my character because my character was a level 12 beginner. Like I had no job at that time, right? And so I eventually decided to make a magician. And so this time I was like, okay, I got to get to level eight so that way I can get my magician job advancement. I'm gonna do everything by the books this time. And now I'm gonna play a little bit smarter. And so that's basically how I started playing Maple Story. It's basically just my friends in my new community just telling me like, hey, go play this game. We'll, we're gonna play with you. And that's where it all started. So that was like in 2005, 2006. I'm not sure exactly what date it was, but it was around the time when like there were no pirates. I think it was like before the pirate update came out because I remember being around for that update to go live. So it had to be sometime before pirates came out. So I'm talking about like 2005, 2006. Unfortunately, I didn't play early enough to get like the mark of the beta or anything of that sort. But comment below, let me know what you or what year you guys started playing Maple Story and tell me what the first class you ever created was. So eventually I learned more about the game and basically what ended up happening was I job advanced my magician at level eight. And then I eventually decided to go push to level 30 after like hours and hours of grinding. I remember going through Kearney City PQ, unplugging my ethernet box so that way we can get the, I guess, duplicated tickets or whatever that was. And like, I remember just going through all of that old school nostalgia that everyone just like really, really yearns for nowadays, I guess. So after months of leveling, grinding, hitting mobs, partying up with my friends, I decided to get to level 30 and I got my second job advancement as an Ice Lightning. And that was pretty cool, however I ended up abandoning my Ice Lightning. I just wasn't feeling like the Magician aesthetics and the progression style and I just wanted to start fresh. So I decided to make a Thief this time and so you guys know me. I love Shadower, I love Night Lord, I'm all about the thieves baby, like I'm a thief head in Maple Story. Like if I'm going to pick any class in this game it's going to be some sort of thief. And I think that really does have to do with my childhood because if you think about it, me growing up in the hood, like in Kerning City, like the Kerning City of America, like we grow up with all of this like hood aesthetic when you're growing up in the hood. You grow up with the graffiti on the walls, you grow up with my uncle, he like loves doing graffiti, like he's a graffiti artist. So, you know, there's that. Um, there's also like when you grow up in the hood, this mindset of poverty, right? And so a lot of people like they struggle with money in the hood. They're always trying to get money. And I guess like being around that mentality my entire life was like, I need to get rich. I need to get money. And that's why I am trying to become a rich bench. And so I guess that really impacted the way that I play because eventually as I started playing Maple Story more, I played a Thief class, I got it to around level 54, and then like the Big Bang update came out and you know things drastically shifted. But as time went on, basically what I was doing is I would mostly just focus on grinding Meso. And the only way you really grinded Meso back in the day was by hunting mobs and picking up the Meso bags from the floor individually or maybe you had a pet or you just you know, went through the free market all day every day and you tried to flip some items so that way you can turn a profit. And that's what I basically did. I remember every time we would get money for birthdays, for Christmas presents, for whatever the occasion may be, I would always save most of it and then I would spend a little bit of money on NX, like $20 here, $20 there. I was never like a big whale when it came to MapleStory. I remember the only time that I really did whale because I saw like, myself making some sort of profit was when Gachapon was really the big deal and when the Mushroom, Shri Mushroom Shrine Gachapon came out I really made a nasty profit by rolling those because I remember getting a lot of good scrolls from that Mushroom Shrine Gachapon 
and also I got two pink adventurer capes which was awesome like if you wanted to flex on people back in the day you needed a pink adventurer cape and so I kept one for myself and then I ended up selling the other one and I made so much meso and with that meso I decided to like kickstart my identity as a merchant I decided to buy my own shop in the store using the MX that I got from you know, birthday money, Christmas money, whatever it may be. And then after I bought my store, I basically just set it up and I saw how much meso I was making by just interacting with the market. And I just sat there all day, every day. I wouldn't even train. I wouldn't go do bosses. I wouldn't really interact with my friends anymore. All I was doing was sitting in FM because I had the one where you had to actually keep your character there. I didn't have the automated one there because those were more expensive, right? And so the entire time I was just AFK in there trying to make meso. And eventually I made a bunch of meso and I was like, man, this is kind of fun just seeing my meso rack up, right? And so I wasn't really doing anything with the meso, but just the aspect of meso collection itself was something that really intrigued me about the game. I didn't really care about my progression or getting all the best gear. All I wanted was like more money. And so I guess when I started playing Reboot, let's fast forward a little bit because Maple Story has been a part of my life basically my entire life, but it was most prominent around sixth grade and middle school where I was really, really playing a lot. And then, you know, off and on I started to play just like everyone else. You quit, you come back, you quit, you come back. And then eventually, you know, Maple Story just didn't have the same hold on me like it used to until 2019 when I decided to come back and try out Reboot. So in 2019, I had a job, I had a full-time job, I was out of college. Obviously I wasn't in high school anymore because I graduated high school in 2013. And so after, you know, college was over with and all that good stuff, basically what happened was I got a job, I felt settled in my career, and I was like, man, I have so much time in the day. When you don't have to study, when you don't have to go to class, when you're not in that college environment anymore, it's like all you're doing is working and you're like, man, what do I really do with all of my free time? Maybe I can go on dates, maybe I can go like start a side hustle, but I was like, you know what? I'm pretty satisfied with my life. I really enjoy being single. I have a bunch of friends that I'm hanging out with. Like, it's all good. Maybe I just need to play some more video games, right? Maybe I should just like look back at my childhood and see what kind of games that I can play. And of course, I turned back to Maple Story. And so Maple Story is just one of the chillest games to play because especially nowadays, even if you have like one hour of gameplay time, you can still progress somewhat. But if you have a bunch of time to spend on the game, you're obviously going to progress faster. And that's what I kind of like about current day Maple Story is that you can kind of take it at your own pace. Whereas back in the day, if you wanted to play solo, it was just like so much more long. However, if you had a community with you like to party up, to kill mobs together, to do PQs with, all that sorts of stuff, you progress faster. However, I do like the solo aspect of today's Maple Story, and so that's one of the reasons why Reboot really appealed to me. I had tried regular server, but the thing I really didn't like about regular server is that I was relying too much on the market at the time. Like, if I didn't want to learn a new piece of content, like Commercy, if I didn't want to learn how to do Commercy, I can just buy something from the auction house. If I didn't want to do CRA, I can just buy CRA gear. And eventually what I ended up realizing, like, oh, I'm not learning how to play this game, actually. So I decided to play Reboot because that focus on, like, your own progression and focus on you learning the mechanics of the game, like how to do the bosses, how to do certain side quests to get the certain gear pieces. That was something that really appealed to me. So I decided to just play Reboot. So in 2019, that's when I started. Probably like July 2019 is when I made my first character, which was my Mercedes on the account. And basically the reason I start with the Mercedes is not only because of the link skill, but I also think Mercedes is just like such a cool class to begin with. And so I always start off with the Mercedes every time that I start off a fresh account. And so I started playing, I started doing my daily bosses every day, started getting the handle of what the game entailed. And once I was like, okay, I want to start playing this game a little bit more seriously, that's when I decided to look into the meta. And the meta at the time was you make a Kana farmer and you park it at Bye Bye Station and you just farm meso all day, every day. And so how does this relate to my maple story? Well, remember, I told you guys that I grew up kind of in the hood. I grew up with my family members, like always like on the hunt for money because we were in poverty. And so 
that aspect lingered on psychologically as a kid, I guess, right? And so when it came to my Maple Story life, I just wanted to hoard all of the money that I could. And so once I realized that like Kana farming was a thing, I really, really, really got into Kana farming. I know conic farming gets like a lot of hate, but honestly, I think conic farming was probably one of the most fun times in Maple Story for me, just because it was fast-paced farming. It was really interactive. I loved, you know, farming the sweaty maps on my Kana instead of taking the lazy route and doing those lazy maps. And so I decided to full on main Kana because when I first started Maple Story, all I was really doing was, you know, making a bunch of characters, getting them to 140, doing daily bosses on all of the characters every day for resources and meso but eventually I was like you know what I need to start a main character I need to get beyond level 200 and so that's when I started to cycle through different characters that I potentially wanted to main so I went through Pathfinder, Ark and then I tried Kana and I was like damn I love this and part of the reason why I loved it so much was because of that meso farming aspect right and so I decided to take my Kana to end game and I decided to like basically speed rush my Kana to endgame because at the time getting carries as a Kana was pretty easy. You had Kishin at your disposal so like anytime you wanted to farm you didn't need to rely on a totem. All you had to do was you know hop on your Kana, farm a little mesos and all that good stuff. Then I decided to join an endgame guild, Savages. Savages was rank 2 at the time and so Savages because GPQ was party based you had to be in a party for GPQ it wasn't just the solo thing that we do nowadays they were really looking for support classes even if the support classes were kind of weak as long as the support classes wanted to progress they were willing to you know accept you into the guild so me at 4k legion level 250 basically this nobody in the maple world I decided to apply to Savages and I basically got in because I was a Kana Right? It's like Maple Story affirmative action at its finest. Things are a bit different nowadays because we have the reboot 5% rule, GPQ is a little bit solo. However, Savages was really willing to carry me through a lot of the content such as Black Mage. And so I started liberating and the rationale as to why they wanted to carry people was so that way the guild itself could get stronger, right? I really liked that aspect that they were really community oriented and so that was like a really big help in my progression and also being around all of these end gamers while i was like a level 250 4k legion noob it really got me interacting with the end game community and that's how i was able to learn a lot of different aspects about how to progress in this game so that was really cool so eventually i decided to get my kana to level 280 I liberated my Kana and at that point I was like, you know what, I feel pretty satisfied with my progression on my account. I think it's time to start a new character. And so that's when I started the Shadower. I started the no totem progression aspect on my Shadower. Even though we had totems at the time, I was going to do this challenge with myself because I was watching some KMS reboot streamers and I was looking at the way they farmed. And I was like, oh, this no totem shadower farming and these rotations look really, really cool. So I decided to basically make a challenge for myself on the YouTube channel, which is probably why a lot of you do follow me in the first place. You know me because of the no, per no totem progression challenge, right? And so basically that got my interest sparked again in meso farming. And the good thing about being a shadower no totem was that even if they decided to remove totems in the future, which they ended up doing, my playstyle was already well equipped to be a long-term meso farming playstyle, right? And so going back to like my childhood and connecting all of this together, you know, Shadower being like the meso farming class of Maple Story, you get 20% extra meso than any other class. Also, you can full clear every map in the game as a Shadower very easily, as you can see like what I'm doing now. Basically, with all of your tools, you're like the perfect meso farming class and I guess like being in poverty and having that poverty mindset for a long time, basically Shadower was the class that I wanted to play. I wanted to farm Meso, I wanted to hoard the Meso, and also like Shadower being from Kerning City, being part of the hood, like that's just totally in line with my aesthetic as I grew up, right? So this is like all part of my childhood and how it impacted my Maple Story journey. But let's talk about my future now because something that I've been really thinking about is money. And so as I start my entrepreneurship journey, which some of you might know about, 
because you follow me on the Twitch stream. I've talked about this a lot on the Twitch stream, but it's not something that I basically told you guys on the YouTube channel. And so something that I really want to be more open um, with is just myself on this YouTube channel because a lot of you just follow me for the guides, for the progression aspect, blah, blah, blah. But some of you may be interested in me as a person. So I want to share a little bit more of what I'm going through as an individual. And basically right now, what I'm going through as an individual is I'm trying to start my own business. If you guys haven't been really keeping up with my Twitch streams, you know that I recently just quit my six figure job, which is like kind of scary, but it's also very exciting because I'm trying to grow something on my own, right? A lot of the times when we ask people that we first meet, we often ask them, oh, what do you do for work, right? And so you often say, oh, I work in HR or, oh, I work in sales. But I decided to start and flip the question around and really ask myself, what do you do for work? And so I listed all of these things that I do for work, like, oh, I commute for work. I wake up early every day for work. I make sure I'm drinking my coffee so I can be awake in the mornings for work. I make sure to sacrifice my health by eating quick and easy meals for work, right? There are so many things that we do for work, but then I just start decided like, what if I just flipped my mindset and I start to ask myself, what do I do for myself? And I realized like, I don't wanna work for someone, especially if I'm gonna be working from home, which is like a whole other issue that I really didn't like. If I'm gonna be working from home in my own space, and I love being at home, I don't wanna be working doing someone else's work. I want to build something on my own. So this entrepreneurship journey that I've been going through has been really eye-opening. And one of the things that a lot of entrepreneurs online from the podcast that I've listened to, YouTube videos that I've listened to, they basically talk about your money mindset. And that's something that I really had to think about, especially as someone who grew up poor. That's just something that I really, really had to think about. And so when I talk about growing up poor, I'm talking about like growing up in the hood, there's gangsters around you, my family members are doing drugs, and one point, My grandma's house, the place where I would hang out all day, every day, the place where I would sleep before school, the place where I would wake up and go to school, the place where I would, you know, basically just like be there every day after school. My grandma's house was shot at. Like, that's how crazy the place we lived in was at the time, right? I'm not sure if it's like that today, but it's just like crazy growing up in that environment. And so when you grow up in that environment, you have a certain mindset about money, especially growing up with my grandma, like, just always stressing about the bills and always stressing about like medical bills and all this sorts of stuff. And then my mom working at, working at a grocery store, my dad being a barber, like these are not high paying jobs. And so when you don't have a high paying job, you have a certain mindset about money. You always think that like there's scarcity in the world, that there's not enough money to go around, that you have to hoard every penny. And so I do see that with my dad, especially like he was like, hey, if we're gonna use this coupon, make sure to get the most value out of it. But I'm like, Dad, it's like, you're really saving like $1. Do you have to really care about $1? And so as I start my entrepreneurship journey, this is something that I've been really trying to like warp my mind about, which is the money mindset and coming from a mindset of abundance. And so even though I did quit my six-figure job recently, I am trying to turn my mindset around and be like, you know what? I'm a smart person. I have gotten through life. I've gotten to a six-figure salary as someone who grew up in the hood. I was a college dropout and I was able to get a really good job after dropping out of college, right? Those are all things that are a testament to my abilities, a testament to how much knowledge and self-worth I have, right? And so I told myself, I gotta stop doing things for work. I wanna start doing things for myself and I have the confidence that I can make something happen, right? And so if you're curious about what my business is going to be, it's actually therichbench.com. So my Maple Story journey has really impacted the way I'm going to influence my business going forward because doing this YouTube stuff with the Maple Story channel, doing the Twitch streaming, doing the thumbnail design and the titles for my YouTube channel, it really inspired me to do something more with social media. And so I'm trying to use social media as leverage to help expand my business in the future. So I started a new YouTube channel, which I barely uploaded something yesterday or this weekend. I started a website called therichbench.com and this is all part of my career coaching business. And so basically what I do as a career coach is that I help clients try to expand their career in whatever aspect they may 
you know, want to expand in. Whether you want to advance at your current workplace, whether you want to start your own business, I'm basically a coach to help inspire you, motivate you, and give you actionable advice as to what you should be doing. So if you guys are interested in that, check out my second YouTube channel and my website. I'll link the description. Um, I'll link in. I'll link in the description all of those details. But basically, I started off working in human resources after college. I really got in tuned with like what recruiters, what human resources managers, hiring managers, what they're really looking for. And what they really look for is like job experience. And so a lot of the time people are like, how do I get a job if I don't have job experience? And so that's something that I can help people with, you know, crafting their resumes and their cover letters. Just because like since I advanced in my career so fast, I basically applied to so many jobs while I was in my early 20s and I really got the hang of like what it takes to craft a really good cover letter, what it takes to craft a really good res resume, especially in the age of today's society where information is goes hand in hand with attention. Like even though you may have good information, if you can't capture someone's attention, like it's just going to go all to waste just because of how short our attention spans are nowadays. Those are the kind of things that I focus on when I'm working in my clients. Or working with my clients and another thing that I try to focus on is confidence because if you don't have confidence you're basically never gonna start looking for your dream job you're never gonna start opening your dream business and I realized that confidence is something that really like really really um, fast-tracked my progression in real life you know I was never able to I was never going to be able to get to a six-figure salary without confidence because if you're never confident enough to just apply for the positions, interview for the positions, market yourself on your resume, then you're never going to get those opportunities. And it actually took a lot of confidence for me to actually quit my job because a lot of people, they're going to be insecure about money. And honestly, that is a fear that I have, like maybe in the back of my mind, but it's not like something that I'm trying to dwell on, you know, because I'm not making like a bunch of money right now, but I know that if I can just, you know, stick with it, be confident with my abilities and just tell myself things are going to work out that I can basically get where I want to be. And so that's something that I really talk with my clients with is just to have confidence because a lot of the times, like I'll give you a story about my friend. My friend is recently unemployed as well. I went to high school with her and she's been kind of insecure her whole life. And not, and not to lie, like I've been insecure as well. I basically had social anxiety as a kid. And when I'm talking social anxiety, I'm not talking like, oh, I'm shy. I'm talking about like, if I were to go see a medical practitioner right now and tell them my symptoms that I had as a child about like being socially awkward, they would basically diagnose me with social anxiety because I had like situations where, you know, in class when I gave public presentations, I would shake and I would sweat. And I remember one of the girls or two of the girls in history class when I was doing a presentation about the Great Depression in history class, they were like, oh my God, he's shaking. And it's like not something that they were making fun of, fun of me for. It was just like, oh, poor thing, you know, like it sucks that he has to shake in front of all these, you know, students. And so other situations like that, I was like shaking, I was like sweating. And so those are like symptoms of social anxiety, like real social anxiety. And so I got over that in college. Maybe that's a story for another time because Coupon's almost ready now. We're about to finish the Wealth Acquisition Podcast, first episode. I hope you guys are enjoying so far. But basically, my friend Christy has been kind of, you know, similar to me in that she's been very insecure, doesn't know what she wants to do in life. But, you know, from an outside perspective, I see so much potential in my best friend. She is really good at talking to people. She's, uh, she's an empath, like she can, you know, listen to your feelings and give you some good guidance. And also she's very spiritual and I thought to myself, or I thought to her, I told her like, hey, why don't you become like a spiritual life coach? And then you know what she told me that really like left a mark on me? She said, who am I to teach someone? But at the end of the day, who is anyone to anyone, right? Like who am I to be here as a MapleStory YouTuber? Like I'm just some random MapleStory person, but I just decided to put myself out there because I decided to just get started, right? And so, same thing, who are, who is your boss to tell you what to do? Well, they're your boss because they advanced in the career ladder, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And like, additionally, who are these other people on YouTube that you may watch, like about productivity, about how to advance your, your career? Who are these people to tell you anything? Well, these people are just people who got started 
before they were ready and they just decided to just start something, right? And that's what I told my friend Christy. I was like, hey, you're never gonna become the person you wanna be unless you just get started. And so I guess that's the moral of today's podcast is basically if you have a dream in life, if you have a goal that you wanna attain, even if it's just in MapleStory, like a goal that you have in MapleStory, just get started. A common problem that we have as MapleStory players is like we know how to progress. We know that we just need to level up. We need to pop the waps, right? However, the hardest thing to do is to actually pop the WAP and get started training. So you just need to break the barrier and get started. A lot of the times we're like looking at maple ranks to look at how much EXP we're averaging per day. We're doing calculations to see how long it's gonna take to get to a certain level goal. And we get so stuck in this analysis paralysis mindset, which actually prevents us from actually just getting started. So if you guys have a goal in life, whether it's in Maple Story, in your personal life, maybe you wanna strengthen your relationship with your family and friends, just get started. And so with that, we have officially concluded the first episode in the Wealth Acquisition Podcast. And my coupons are about to expire. I got a good amount of fragments. I have 52 fragments in my bank. I farmed like 400, meso- 400 mil um, today by speaking to you guys. And I really had a fun time just like opening up. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about me. And if you guys want to stick around for the next episode of the Wealth Acquisition Podcast, make sure to subscribe to the Maple Binge YouTube channel. Later!